welcome back to our Porsche restoration project. So we're all done traveling around, going to car shows and having a good time. So time to get serious and get our restoration back on track today. Um, today in this video, we're gonna take a little bit of a break from our upholstery work and roll through some of the trim. Uh, you can see I got laid out on the bench here, uh, some of the trim and hardware that'll get installed over the top of our carpet and upholstery work. So first, let's just uh, do a quick overview of what I have here on the bench. I'll discuss a little bit about what I did to either restore the parts, get them back to a new condition, or replace them. And after that, we'll take them outside on the car and get them installed. Okay, so back into the groove here. Uh, let's just do a quick pan view here of what we're going to try and install in this video today. So we've got seat rail extensions and seat rails. Also our uh, heater control vents. Those have been refinished and uh, ready to go back on the car. Our shifter knobs. We've got seat belt hardware. It's all uh, reconditioned. Uh, door strikes have been rebuilt and a new replacement door sill uh, slash thresholds there. Uh, and also a rear quarter window trim. We can put some of that on. And then also uh, try and finish up with our uh, door jam molding there. So I think the best way to take this on here, let's just uh, start with something simple here. We'll start with the uh, heater control vents. Um, talk a little bit about what we did to refinish those and take them outside and put them on. Okay, so having a close-up look then at our uh, heater control slide. So what I did to refinish these, um, these come with a rivet, uh, one on each end here. And what that does is that stops the door uh, from opening and closing uh, and completely sliding off the track there. Uh, so what you can do, you can just buzz off the backside of one of those rivets. That'll fall out of there. And then you can pull your door out. Uh, after that, just uh, zinc refinishing uh, with our Caswell system. And then uh, to refinish this door here, uh, original plastic looked a little bit dull and some scratches in there. Um, so what I did is uh, epoxy primer the plastic. That works really well on plastic. Uh, then did a black base coat and a clear urethane top coat. Um, then once all that's put together, um, you slide your door back in there. And you, you almost need to like sand on your uh, tracks in there. Um, just to get the right tension so your slide action uh, works without having to press too hard or pull too hard on that. Once you got everything where you like it, a uh, little uh, dry silicone lubricant in the tracks there, um, then you can go ahead and uh, epoxy back in. I use a little JB weld here on that rivet. Um, you can epoxy that guy back in there and that'll hold real good. Um, and that just fits in place. Two screws. We've uh, refinished our original screws just so it looks as original as possible there. Um, so let's go ahead and take that outside, put it on, see what she looks like. And uh, just a little bit of prep work here before we install those would, would be needed. Um, all I've done here is uh, located my screw holes. That was done when we installed our carpet and then uh, brushed out that cavity in there as best I could with some high temperature stove paint. Uh, if you black that out in there, it looks a little bit better. The door's open, you might see in there, um, just finishes it off a little bit better. Okay, let's get those in place, see what they look like. And then just drawing this down so she's just biting into the carpet. Oh, it's plenty tight up against there. That should be just fine. And then same thing back here, just enough to where it's drawn down, biting into the carpet. It would be very easy to strip this screw and over tighten. All right, let's take into that. That's going to work out real good. And then our other side. So once we get our first screw set up here, uh, best way to find that second hole, it'll be in the ballpark, but using all kind of get you in there. And then we can put that screw in there. And we just snug that one down too. All right, and then moving on to our uh, seat rail extensions and seat rails. So what I've done to refinish these, uh, just re-zinc plated, these are original rails. And uh, after zinc plating, I've taken a metal polish, I used a Blue Magic, and uh, polished up the side of the rail, uh, top edge here also. And what that's gonna do, that's gonna give us a little bit better sliding action on the seat. Once it's all put together, we won't have to rely too much on grease to get it to move freely. And then our seat rail extensions, these are the originals. Um, these come up really nice. Um, in, in stock form, these are just painted. 
uh, from the factory and it's a real thin paint on there and it just has tends to get a flake off you get a little bit of rust under there rust pitting uh, but uh, a sandblast uh, with two coats of PRR15 get a real nice finish on top of there and uh, no problem reusing those okay so then looking at the fasteners uh, pretty much replacing most of the hardware uh, mounting the seat rails and seat rail extensions um, you can see here here's a part number I got from Stoddard um, and they're they're calling out for 28 screws and washers to uh, to do the whole set however um, in my car I had two different lengths bolts and uh, I think the reason they had a shorter bolt on some of these is uh, one of the rails, there's a fuel line running right underneath the rail. So if you run this longer screw in here, uh, you could actually run into your fuel line and uh, that probably wouldn't be too good. So you want to make sure um, the fuel line that runs underneath those bolt holes is either pushed far enough away where these will clear. If not, uh, you're going to have to go with a shorter screw in there. Uh, this one I couldn't find from Stoddard, so I've gone ahead and just refinished my originals that rail there okay let's take these guys outside and put them on so let's just take a look at that fuel line running underneath that area there you can see you run that bolt down in there getting real close to that guy um, I know from having worked in that area that the fuel line is uh, tied off and secured really well in there uh, so the, really the only concern we have here is a length of screw going down in there so uh, just something to look out for double check your length on that um, you can run something down in there to take a measurement just to make sure you're not going to be rubbing up against it. Alright, and then moving on to our uh, seat rail extension. So you can see here in the body we have uh, underneath this area we've got floating nuts. And what these are for, these are going to be for uh, the seat rail extension adjustment. So what's going to happen, we're going to go ahead and put this in place. Um, we can tighten those screws down. Uh, to some degree, but we can't really tighten them down to where this doesn't move because what's going to happen um, Once we get our uh, seat rails in place and then we mount our seat into the rails uh, We're going to have to either adjust this this way or this way or this way or this way um, Depending on the tracking of the seat so the seats really going to dictate what needs to happen with these rails in their final position but for now we can go ahead and just mount it in there uh, slightly snug and that should be good so I've got it sitting in place now you can see the side to side action uh, up front and also in the rear here plenty of adjustment there um, so what's going to happen uh, we'll mount our seat in place into the rails um, these ones here on top will be tight uh, so they're not going to move and then uh, we'll slightly snug this down uh, to where it barely moves and, and then once we start sliding the seat front to back um, that'll kind of track it for us it'll straighten it out true it up in line with the other tracks and then uh, then we can go ahead and tighten it down once we like everything so real important to have a little adjustment in there uh, make everything work out just right and then setting up our rails uh, one thing we want to do just to make sure we're going to tap down all our holes here just so everything threads in there nicely once we get running our bolts down in there um, I have not found any uh, final torque specs in the manual as to uh, what the torque specs should be on those bolts, uh, but I didn't think I would find any. Uh, typically, when you have an Allen type bolt or screw, um, you're just tightening it down snug. Um, the bolts are hardened. The, the steel inside this body here is not. It'd be very easy to strip that out. So, uh, in my mind, we just want to torque it down until we're tight everything feels snug and then stop right there let me run those in there we'll get everything set up and then we'll uh, do a final torque on everything right about there and then everything uh, everything in place just so we got a good wiggle there kind of seat itself uh, once we got everything where we want it just snug those up all the way up and down Right about there. We can always go back and tighten them down more later, but if we overdo it now, it will really be a problem for us.
Okay, that's that. And then a close-up look at our work here. So everything seemed to uh, fall back into place real nice. Uh, seemed like it's going to work out okay. The only thing that didn't quite make it was right here near the back. Uh, a little bit short on my carpet kit, so what I'll have to do is cut a patch carpet and uh, plug that in there. And then the other thing is uh, how many fasteners we went through here. So uh, Stoddard's calling out 28 for the set, but basically they're talking about the seat rails only. So you'd have 28 bolts on the seat rails. Um, you'll have an additional 12 volts on your seat rail extensions, which isn't a bad idea to switch those out anyways. They look nice and uh, will match everything. Um, so if you want to uh, get your set, you'll need a 28 plus 12, uh, and then keep keep in mind your uh, fuel line issue. If uh, you've got a fuel line issue on your car, you'll need shorter bolts for that area. On this car, it's on the driver's side. Uh, on your car, I'm not sure what it would be. Okay, next, let's get our seat bolt anchors, get those put into place. Also, we can put our uh, luggage uh, straps in the bottom section here. I don't think we're going to be able to do our uh, upper section in the deck uh, with those because we have to pull that deck out uh, down the road anyways to put our back window in. But for now, we can tighten up this back end here. Let's get that hardware and set it up. So looking at our seat belt hardware and uh, luggage strap anchors, uh, what I've done to refinish these, I uh, peeled off the old coating. Uh, you can see here, this is kind of the uh, remnants of what's left over. So how I got this off, I, I soaked the anchors in uh, some paint stripper for about a week. And that seemed to soften this uh, old plastic casing up just enough where you could peel it off of there and, uh, and get rid of it. After that, I uh, just refinished the hardware. Um, our finishing washers here, uh, original color, color was gold on those. And then uh, Plasti Dip, the, uh, the anchors and then also the uh, luggage straps and then used a, uh, a product here called Plasti Dip Glassifier. So after you Plasti Dip, uh, it doesn't really look that great uh, with a finished job on there, but it seems like when you spray this uh, Glassifier on it, it really smooths it out, puts a nice shine on there and gives it a nice feel. So uh, that seemed to work out really good. All right, let's take these outside and put them on. So first thing I'm doing is I'm just running all four anchors in by hand just to make sure they're going to bottom out and uh, be seated in an upright position. The other thing I'm checking for is the distance on our washer here, our finishing washer, um, that when I draw this in tight that it's going to be where it needs to be in relation to the, the carpet on this side and uh, drawing up onto this edge here. So this is a tapered washer. Uh, the inside edge here is tapered. Uh, not possible to put it on this way. You can see it won't won't actually slide down on there. It's going to have to go on this way. So a little red rubber grease on here to help draw it in. Um, and then I'm going to put some Loctite on our threads here. That'll help lubricate it and thread it in by hand. So no tools on this one to tighten it up. And then looking at these two guys here. So these are already drawn in. You can see how much space I have between the carpet back here and this edge. So uh, that washer is just barely going to be touching the carpet once these are fully secured. I've already put the washer on there just to kind of get it in position. Okay, both hands on there. Really turn it down. Right about there. Okay, that's where it's going to be. Take a look at that washer. And that's how it should look. Okay, fully bottomed out. That's what they should look like. Clean up that grease there. And then on the back side here. All right, looking good. And then our luggage strap anchors, uh, pretty straightforward. The only difference uh, between them would be the screws. So this straighter screw here, this is going to go towards the uh, footwell uh, down inside the car. And these uh, ones with the tapered point here, these are going to go up on top of the deck. Let's go look at that and see why that's there. Okay, looking at those tapered screws uh, from the top side here, let's get in here at a little bit of an angle. So you can see as it's drawn down there, uh, if you don't have that tapered point on there, the screw's going to hit the body uh, before it draws up and gets seated. So that's why they put the tapered screws there. Next, we're going to go ahead and install our uh, shoulder harness bolts. Uh, we're just going to have to feel around the upholstery for the uh, location of this, poke a hole in it. Um, also, we'll Loctite this 
and uh, run it in with our hand screwdriver. Okay, so I'm just kind of pressing in the area where it goes, get a little embossing going there. You can see that area. So we'll just poke a hole in the center there, run our screw in. Let me put the camera down so I don't have any accidents, and then we'll run those guys in. So it looks like these ones are going to run in a little bit better if we remove some material. You can see uh, poking a hole in there is not quite going to do it. What's happening is the back side of the escutcheon is pushing on the fabric and creating too big of an indent. So we need to cut some material out. And that's why right there. So we need to remove about three quarters of an inch of material uh, so that it has room to inset there. And then we should be nice and flush. All right, let's look at that. That should be enough out of there. Let's try running that in there one more time. That worked a lot better. Okay, let's take a look and see. Everything seems to be drawn up real good there. There's a proper indent and looks nice and clean. So here's a close-up look at our new replacement seals from Porsche. Um, compared to our originals, uh, texture and uh, scale, exactly the same pattern. Uh, the only difference really would be the uh, sheen on the originals were a little bit shinier, a little bit deeper color, and our new replacements are uh, more of a satin finish. Um, the fit is exact. The only thing I had to do, uh, just relocate a few holes um, in relation to the original hole pattern. Other than that, uh, these are ready to go. So we've already pre-fit them. Let's take them outside, screw them in place, and see what they look like. And then once we have all our screws into place, then we'll go ahead and just torque them down, uh, being careful not to overdo it. Uh, stainless steel screws are very brittle. They're hard, but they're brittle. Tighten everything down. And then a close-up look there, just to see how tight everything fits in there. Real nice fitment from Porsche 50 years later. The back of that thing, right on the money. So if you had too much buildup in paint, that could be a problem with these guys. Might have to do some filing. All right, let's go ahead and move on. Uh, let's get our door strikes, put those in, and then we can wrap up these jams. And then a close-up look at our door strikes here. Uh, so what I've done to recondition these, um, I bought a new replacement kit of the internal parts from Stoddard. That fit really well and worked out really good. Um, but you'll have to get them apart. And how I took mine apart, um, these two pins here from the outside, got heads on them like that. From the back side, you'll have to drill out that pin until it's free. Then you can drift it out, uh, coming out from the front. Uh, once those are out, then this can be pivoted. So we'll want to leave this pin in place. Um, these center dowels will come out, and then this thing will rotate. It'll stay put together uh, by that pin, but it will rotate which will gain access to the internals. Uh, then once you switch those out, you can rotate it back, drift your pins back in location there. Uh, everything lines up good, and then epoxy them back in there. Um, wasn't too bad, a little bit of a wrestling match getting them apart, but um, once you get it apart, you'll see what needs to happen there. And then uh, also some shims that go on the back side of these. Um, these are replacement shims from Porsche, and I've labeled them left to right. This was the uh, thickness of the shim that I took out of the car. When I took the car apart, uh, I'm imagining we're going to be right in the same location when we put them back, um, as I haven't really done any body work to the jam. So let's go ahead and take those out, slide them on, and see what they look like. And then just like our uh, seat rail extension, so we have an adjustable backing plate. Uh, I'm going to clean the threads out with a tap first. You can see quite a range of adjustment in there. Uh, so all we can really do today, we can just set the strikes in there, um, snug it down and, and call it good. We can actually do the adjustment and uh, final torque once we get our door in place and fully adjusted out. I think right about there. Okay guys, so uh, time is kind of creeping up on us again here. So let's just try, uh, try to do one or two more quickie things here and then we'll call it good for today on this video. I wanted to go into some more things, but it's just getting away from us. Um, I wanted to do these uh, corner moldings here, uh, but there's quite a bit going on with them. I think that's gonna take 
uh, quite a bit of explaining to do on uh, a future video. So uh, let's just go ahead and press in our uh, door seals next. Uh, the one thing we want to be looking out for on those, there's a buildup and weld in the uh, upper passenger corner rear and the driver corner rear there. That's really going to be the uh, locating point. Let's take a look at the uh, moldings inside the shop there, show what that relief cut is from Porsche, uh, and then we go ahead and press those in. So here's a look at our door rubbers here. Uh, left and right door seal, same part number, they're interchangeable. Um, here's the relief cut I was showing you. This is, this is the area that goes into the weld. So this is pre-shaved off from Porsche to fit that build up and weld in those areas. And that'll be our starting point. So for today, all I'm really gonna do is I'm just gonna press these in with some plastic tools, uh, show you what they look like in proper position. And uh, all that's really gonna do for us is uh, start stretching them out and uh, get on them getting them to conform to the shape of that area. We will have to do probably a little bit more precise fitment. Uh, once we install the doors, they may need to come out or be pressed in. So uh, no glue at this point. We just want to press them in there, see what they look like, and then uh, we can go from there. So this is our starting point right here. So we're just going to put that over the weld that tuck, tucked up in there. We're just pressing everything in. Okay, so that pretty much gives you an idea of what needs to happen there to get that pressed into place. I'm just using some plastic tools uh, with some blunt edges on there to get it pressed in without damaging the seal. Uh, let me go ahead and finish this off, then we'll stand back and take a look at it. All right, let's do a close-up here and see how we did. So everything seemed to press in there uh, real nice, didn't have any issues, um, nothing too long, too short. It just seemed to press into place uh, nice and relaxed, and that's what you want. So really you want to do a dry fit, uh, get everything pressed in there. Um, if everything looks good, you don't have any issues anywhere, then you can pull sections at a time and glue behind those sections. Everything seems to tuck in real nice. Nice and straight, nothing bunched up. Uh, again, another really nice job by Porsche. So let's go ahead and finish up today by sliding on our shifter knobs and we'll call it good. Well, we're starting to mow through some parts, and as you can tell by this video, um, everything down to the smallest detail, uh, even the smallest washer, the smallest screw, everything uh, Porsche engineered was worked out down to the, the finest detail. Can't just throw it in. Really got to take a look at it, uh, work it out, make sure everything's going to work out just right. Well, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.